Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're back with some more casual gameplay, featuring some new and previously played commanders. So let's hop right into it and see who's playing what. First up is Jason, playing a new card from the Brothers War set, Drafna. This here's a mono blue artifact deck that plans on using a lot of power stones to get a lot of free artifacts. Jason will keep an opening hand of a Snow Island, Scrying Sheets, Arcane Signet, Thought Vessel, Spine of Ishsa, Fabricate, and Spell Swindle. Up next we have Logan returning with his Lagrella list. This Bant deck is all about enter the battlefield triggers and then using his commander and other cards in his deck to repeat those triggers. Logan will keep an opening hand of Island, Aganjo Seat of the Empire, Canopy Vista, Ghostly Flicker, Wargate, Wall of Blossoms, and Yorion Sky Nomad. After Logan comes Cameron returning with Baba La Saga. The Skolgari deck mostly plays with the Aristocrats playstyle, and it has a little graveyard shenanigans as well. He keeps an opening hand of Colony Garden, Blink Moth Nexus, Wild Growth, Nature's Lore, Lightning Greaves, Woe Strider, and Noxious Gear Hulk. And last but not least, we have Matt rolling up with his new Angelo deck. This Grixis deck plans on abusing its commander's ability to get free copies of instants and sorceries to take over the game. Matt will keep an opening hand of Island, Polluted Delta, Haunted Ridge, Mana Confluence, Arcane Signet, Brainstorm, and Exalted Flamer of Zinch. We're about to hop right into the gameplay, but before we do, leave us a comment down below letting us know who you think is going to win. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out all our links in the description. We've got a second channel where we post our podcast, links to our Patreon, links to our Discord, you name it. We've even got affiliate links, and our first one is Dragon Shield. So if you're looking to pick up any high quality magic products such as playmats, deck boxes, or sleeves, be sure to check out our link. We've also got a link to our Inked Gaming referral page, so if you're looking to make any custom playmats or anything of the sort, be sure to check them out as well. But that is enough talk, let's hop right into the gameplay. It would appear that Cameron wins the dive roll, so he'll play a Besageous land for turn, and he'll enchant it with his wild growth, and then pass to Matt. Who plays Island, then passes to Jason. And I'm just gonna let you guys know right now, Jason's deck is supposed to have snow lands in them, but he couldn't find them for the life of him, so he's just playing regular islands as snow islands. So, he plays a snow island, wink wink, and then passes to Logan. Who will just play a Canopy Vista, and then pass to Cameron. Who will immediately tap for two green mana, and cast Nature's Lore. Matt responds by casting his Brainstorm, drawing three and then putting two back, and then Cameron will search for an overgrown tomb untapped to the battlefield. He'll then play a Blink Moth Nexus, and then cast Lightning Greaves. The turn is then passed to Matt, who will play his Polluted Delta, and immediately fetch with it to find a Volcanic Island to the battlefield, and then he'll cast his Arcane Signet and pass to Jason, who top decks and plays an Ancient Tomb as land for turn, and then he'll use it to cast an Arcane Signet, taking two damage, and then he'll cast his commander, Drafna. The turn is then passed to Logan, who will play an island, and then he'll tap for two to cast Wall of Blossoms and draw a card, and then he'll pass to Cameron, who immediately casts Baba La Saga and equips her with Lightning Greaves. He'll then make his Blink Moth Nexus activate itself, making it an artifact creature and a land, and then he sacrifices it to Baba La Saga. It is three types, so everyone loses three life, Cameron gains three life, and draws three cards. Cameron then plays Urza Saga as land for turn and passes to Matt, who will play a Badlands as land for turn. He then drops our favorite monkey, Ragavan, then will cast his commander and pass the turn to Jason, who plays another Snow Island, then we'll move to combat, punch Cameron for two commander, and then we'll pass the turn to Logan, who starts off by playing a Ganjo as land for turn, and then he'll tap for one to cast Ozolith. He'll then cast a Sutra Priest, and then pass the turn. And to save us all a little bit of time, I'm not going to announce every trigger. Cameron will start his turn off by casting a Talisman of Resilience. He'll then play his Colony Garden, making him an 0-1 plant, and then he'll just pass the turn. Matt will play a Haunted Ridge, and then he'll move to combat and swing for two at Jason with Ragavan. Damage is done, and then Matt gets a treasure and exiles a card off Jason's library. And the top card is Karn Silax. Matt decides not to cast it, so he'll just pass the turn to Jason, who starts off with the Scrying Sheets, and then he'll tap his Ancient Tomb for a Thought Vessel, and then he'll just pass the turn to Logan, who starts off with a Misty Rainforest, and then he'll cast Lagrilla. When she enters the battlefield, he opts to exile Wall of Blossoms, Jason's Commander, Ragavan, and Cameron's Plant. Matt decides to respond, however, by casting a big score, and he'll sacrifice Ragavan to his commander to copy it. The card he discards is Mana Confluence, and then Jason decides he'll tap for 5 and Spell Swindle one of the copies because he wants his own treasures. After all that happens, Lagrella's ETB ability will resolve. Logan will then attempt to pass to Cameron, but Cameron stops on end step to activate his Urza Saga to make a Karnstruct. 
He'll then move to his turn, and when Urza's Saga ticks up, he'll respond to it by floating a colorless with it, and then he'll activate Babala Saga, sacrificing the Urza's Saga and the Construct to draw three, gain three, and have everyone else lose three. He'll then resolve the Urza's Saga trigger, and he'll find Soul Ring. Now moving on to his main phase, he'll tap his Talisman for a black to cast Dockside Chef. He'll then move the Lightning Greaves over the Dockside Chef so that he can cast and still energy on Babala Saga. Jason is not a big fan of this though, and he says it would be better if Cameron had a Frog Lizard, and so he casts Rapid Hybrid on Bob Lasagna in response. It'll resolve, so she is destroyed and Cameron gets his 3-3. He does forget to immediately put out the token, but he will remember later. After this, he'll cast a Courser of Crufix, revealing a Snow Forest on the top of his library. He'll play it as land for turn, and he'll gain a life from it. And then Cameron will suit his 3-3 up with the Lightning Greaves, and he'll swing it at Jason for 3 damage. Then post-combat, Cameron will move the Lightning Greaves over to the Courser. He'll then cast Zulaport Cutthroat, and then pass the turn to Matt, who starts off with a Bloodstained Mire. Then we'll cast his Exalted Flamer of Zinch. After this, he fetches with his Bloodstained Mire for a Swamp, then he'll overload a Vandal Blast, not sacrificing to Casualty, and then there's a Flamer Trigger. The turn is then passed to Jason, who starts off with a Snow Island, and then he'll cast a Fabricate, taking two to his Ancient Tomb. He finds a Mystic Forge to his hand, and then we'll pass the turn to Logan, who will stop him on instep, to fetch with his Misty Rainforest and find Aspara's headquarters. Then on his turn, Logan finds a Plains to the battlefield, and then he drops Yorion. He'll exile Lagrella, and this will return his wall and Jason's commander. The wall enters with two counters and draws Logan a card. He'll then move to his instep and return Lagrella back to the battlefield. She'll exile Yorion, Jason's commander, the Flamer of Zinch, and Zulaport Cutthroat. He then forgets that he's in his instep and attacks Jason for one, but it's just one damage, it won't matter. The turn is now Cameron's, and he'll start off by casting Arcane Signet. He'll then cast Balagan Recovery, returning Lightning Greaves back to his hand. He then plays Dryad Arbor, which Sutrapreet negates the life gain from. Cameron will then move to combat and swing for three at Matt, and then he'll pass the turn to Matt, who plays a Fable Passage as land for turn. And then he'll just pass the turn to Jason, who on instep will activate Scrying Sheets with his totally legit Snowlands, but there are no snow permanents on the top of his library, so he'll move to his turn, in which he'll cast Mystic Forge. And the top card of his library is a Soul Ring, which he immediately casts. He'll then activate the Mystic Forge, paying a life, and he'll exile Hall of Tagsin. He'll then play another Snow Island, and then a Silver Mirror, and then he'll pass the turn to Logan, who starts off with another Plains. And then he'll cast a Thassa Deep Dwelling, which kind of makes the table scared. He'll then drop a Rest in Peace, exiling everyone's graveyard. He'll then move to his instep, and Thassa will trigger, and he'll blink Lagrella, returning creatures for everybody. Lagrella and Yorion both have an ETB trigger when they enter the battlefield, he chooses to resolve Yorion's first, exiling the Wall of Blossoms, and then with Lagrella's ability, he'll choose Yorion, Jason's commander, Zulaport Cutthroat, and the Flamer of Zinch again. Matt decides to respond by cracking his Fabled Passage. He'll find a mountain to the battlefield untapped, and then he'll channel Otawara, bouncing Yorion back to Logan's hand. Lagrella's ability will then resolve, and then the turn is passed to Cameron, who will start by playing Vault of Whispers off the top of his library, and then he'll tap for five again to cast Babala Saga. After this, he'll cast and re-equip Lightning Greaves to her, and then he'll immediately activate her again, sacrificing Dockside Shift and Vault of Whispers, and that is more than enough to do the three three times. And since he's drawing three cards, and he has Corsair of Crufix out, he has to reveal those three. They are two Forests and a Gloom Shrieker. After this, Cameron will move to combat and swing for three at Logan, who just takes the three. After this, Cameron moves to instep, and Logan's wall comes back, so he'll draw a card, and then Cameron has to discard two cards. The turn is now officially passed to Matt who will just pass to Jason, who will start off with a Palladium Mirror, and then he'll exile a land off the top of his library with Mystic Forge. He'll then cast a Thran Dynamo off the top of his library, then a Liquid Metal Torque, then a Strionic Resonator, and then he'll play a Snow Island from his hand. The turn is then shipped to Logan, who will play a Tapped Hollowed Fountain, and then he redrops Yorion. He'll exile his Wall and Lagrella, and this will have everyone but him have creatures return to the battlefield. He'll then move to his end step, and he'll have his Thassa trigger target Yorion, but he'll have his Yorion return trigger occur first. So, Lagrella trigger and Wall draw trigger, and Lagrella's targets are the Wall, Corsair of Crufix, Flamer of Zinch, and Drafna. Jason decides to put his commander in the command zone this time. The Thassa trigger will finally blink Yorion. He'll exile Lagrilla again, returning everyone's creatures. So Logan will draw a card, and his wall enters with two 1-1 counters. And after quite an eventful turn, Logan will pass the turn to Cameron, who will start off by playing a snow-covered swamp off the top of his library and gain a life. He'll then tap for six mana and cast Noxious Gear Hulk. Yorion is the chosen target, and it is destroyed, so Cameron will gain five life. Cameron will then pass the turn, and Lagrilla comes back on end step, exiling Wall of Blossoms, Corsair of Crufix, Flamer of Zinch, and the Mirror. The turn is now Matt's, who will just pass to Jason again. 
And Jace will start off by activating his Mystic Forge, paying a life, and exiling Fidelkin Archmage. He'll then drop a Spine of Ishsal. He'll target Rest in Peace with its ability. He'll then copy its ability with Dranic Resonator to also destroy the Suture Priest. And then the turn is passed to Logan, who will tap for 5 and cast Cloud Blazer, drawing him 2 cards and getting him 2 life. He'll then play a Tundra as land for turn. He'll then move to end step and blink Lagrello with Thassa. This will return Wall of Blossoms to the battlefield with two counters and he'll draw a card. Lagrello will also trigger again and he'll exile Cloud Blazer, Zulport Cutthroat, Flamer of Zinch, and Palladium Mare. After this, Cameron will stay on end step and activate Baba La Saga, sacrificing Corsair of Crufix and Noxious Gear Hulk to gain three, draw three, and have everyone else lose three. The turn is now Cameron's and he'll start off with an exploration. He'll then play two forests. And then he'll cast a Woe Strider, which gets him a little goat friend when he enters the battlefield. He'll then enchant the Strider with Aspect of Mongoose. He'll also cast DRS and Arbor Elf. After this, he'll move to combat and swing for three at Matt, and then he'll pass to Matt, who will play Gemstone Caverns as land for turn. And then he'll cast Determined Iteration. He'll then cast Dockside Extortionist, and the table's count is 13, so Matt will make 13 treasure tokens. The turn is then passed to Jason, and he'll start by casting an Extra Planner Lens and he totally exiles a snow-covered island under it. He'll then recast Drafna, and then play Inventor's Fair as land for turn. He'll then cast an Ugin's Nexus, and then he'll pass the turn to Logan, who casts Ghostly Flicker on instep. His targets are Wall of Blossoms and Lagrella. Club Blitzer also comes back, so Logan will get to draw three cards and gain two life from this. Lagrella will then exile all the same targets as last time. Cameron, however, responds to the targeting of his Zulaport, and he'll sacrifice his goat to his Woe Strider to scry one. Zulaport trigger, and he bottoms it. After this, he still has another response, and he'll activate Baba La Saga, sacrificing Aspect of Mongoose, and Dryad Arbor. Zulaport cutthroat trigger, and Cameron draws three, gains three, and everyone else loses three. Unfortunately, this will kill Jason, and then Lagrella's trigger will resolve. The turn is now Logan's, and he'll play Authority of the Consoles. He'll then cast a Noble Hierarch, and then play a Windswept Teeth. After this, he casts Rhystic Study, and then he'll move to his end step and blink Lagrella with Thassa. Club Blazer will come back for a second, so he gains two and draws two. And then because Cameron and Matt's creatures come back, he'll gain another two. He'll then target the same targets with Lagrella again, but Cameron decides to sacrifice his Cutthroat to Woe Strider. Cutthroat triggers off itself, and Cameron will keep the card on top. Logan will then move to cleanup and has to discard a land, and then he'll pass the turn to Cameron. Now on Cameron's turn, he plays a Mutavault as land for turn. He then has Mutavault animate itself, and then he'll enchant it with a Rancor. He'll then sacrifice the Mutavault and the Rancor to Baba La Saga, and the Rancor will go back to his hand. He'll then draw three, gain three, and his opponents will lose three. He'll then activate his Deathrite Shaman to exile Temple Garden from Logan's Graveyard to float black. He'll then tap for three more and cast Pitiless Plunderer. After this, he casts Life from the Loam, returning Mutavault and Dryad Arbor back to his hand. Logan then suddenly remembers he has Rhystic Study, and he asks Cameron if he pays one for the Loam or the Pitiless Plunderer, and Cameron does for both. Cameron then plays Mutavault again as a second land drop, and then he'll pass the turn, and he has to discard two cards. Matt unfortunately has been drawing awfully this game, so he just passes to Logan, who will fetch on instep, and he finds a tropical island. Now with four mana, he'll flash in a Restoration Angel. You better bet, he blinks Lagrella. Creatures come back, Cloud Blazer trigger, Authority of the Consoles trigger, and then Lagrella re-exiles everything. Except this time, the target is Pitiless Plunderer for Cameron. Cameron responds by sacrificing his ape to make a treasure and scry one to the bottom. He'll then do the exact same thing with his Deathrite Shaman, and then he'll pass priority to Matt, who will cast Audacious Swamp, sacrificing his Flamer to copy it, and his copies are his Commander and Dockside Extortionist. So to save time, he's just going to shuffle once and then flip the top two. First card is Black Market Connections, and the second is Mystic Confluence. And Logan now realizes he has been missing Rhystic Study triggers. Matt's Confluence choices are Bounce Cloud Blazer and then draw two cards. He'll then cast a body count, and he will pay one to Rhystic Study. He's had one creature die under his control this turn, so he'll draw a card. He'll then flash in a Snapcaster Mage, paying the one. His chosen card is body count, so he'll cast it, exile it, and draw another card. The turn is now finally passed to Logan. He starts off with an Ancient Tomb, and then Wild Growth Supplanes. He then drops a Champion of Lamholt, and then casts Wargate for five. He finds Abdel Adrian to the battlefield. This presents Logan with a combo that allows him to make as many 1-1 soldiers as he could ever dream of. Essentially, Abdel Adrian will enter the battlefield and exile Lagrella. When he does this, he'll make a 1-1 soldier. He then has to move to end step, and Thassa will begin the loop by blinking Abdel Adrian. Lagrella will come back, and so will Abdel Adrian, putting two triggers on the stack. Then, by introducing Restoration Angel, Adrian and Lagrella are able to blink each other as many times as Logan could possibly want. And every time Adrian exiles something, he makes a 1 1 soldier. And so Logan decides he's going to make 69,421 1 1 soldiers off this. 
This also triggers Champion of Land Halt an equal amount of times. Unfortunately though, he has nothing to give haste, so he has to pass the turn to Cameron and hope there's no interaction. Cameron immediately drops a Blood Artist and then a Damnation. And there are no responses at the table. So when this Damnation resolves, Cameron gets a minimum of 69,420 Blood Artist triggers, which he will immediately use to absolutely murder Logan and Matt. So, um, yeah. That's the end of the video. Cameron and Baba Lasaga win. Well everyone, there you have it. That game was absolutely wild and not at all how I expected it to end. I'm sad Matt didn't get to do as much as he would have wanted. He told me later that he drew way too many lands that game. What did you guys think? Did you like it? If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment down below. Also be sure to check out all our links in the description. You can find deck lists there. And just want to let you guys know we will not be posting a video next week. Everyone here is busy with the holidays and kind of needs a break. Yeah, I'm really tired after editing this one. It was actually kind of a long game. So I'm signing off for now. You guys all have a smooth day.